out. Let's take a look at the final three. This is how these best men made the uh, top three during the competition. Weber is a fourth round effort. Threatened the 80 metre line prior to this, throwing up to 81.07. It was the best in the uh, first five rounds for the German champion, who had thrown nearly 85 metres this year. Johannes Wetter over for the 78 metre effort, then 82.13 came in round two for the world number one. in history, now behind Jan Zelezny. And then the uh, best of the first five rounds was by Trinidad Tobago's Kashawn Walcott, London Olympic champion, 28 years old now. In round three, he put one out to 82, 81. Three of his uh, first five efforts were uh, beyond 80 metres. So that's how they got there. That's uh, the final three. And again, if you're new to this, the first five rounds essentially earn you the right to have a sixth round and a final sudden death playoff. And there are our three final threes. They'll throw in reverse order. So it'll be Weber, then Vetter, and then Walcott. Walcott having the advantage of throwing last and knowing exactly what he has to do to win the competition. So here he goes, what a remarker Weber put down. The German title in Braunschweig in early June at 1833. And then his last two competitions prior to this, he threw 82 metres in Madrid and then 84 metres in Luzerne. The rain and cool conditions a couple of weeks back. And that Weber, well, not delighted with it, is he? 77, maybe 78 metres. Got to sit on that and hope that the other two don't have a good sit in the final round either. This is it, the uh, sudden death situation that creates this jeopardy. Maybe uh, that 77 16. Yeah, he's really frustrated with that. Well, it's an interesting psychology, isn't it? Because having got yourself into the, the final three, into the sixth round, do you. Go for safety, go for something conservative, or do you try and go for it? Better than world champion, second furthest thrower in history. Here he goes, the German needs to beat 77 16 initially, gives it an absolute roar. Well, that is well clear of 80 meters, that is 85 meters approaching. If it is, that is the furthest throw of the evening so far. He's often said that trying to throw a javelin a long way is a bit like going into a casino and playing roulette. The odds, frankly, are stacked against you, getting it absolutely right. But it isn't half fun trying. And I think he's got that one pretty right. Everything has to be just on point, doesn't it? The trajectory, the speed, the good foot plant. And he seems to have got that right. It's a strange analogy, that one, Chris, isn't it? Because you are in control of the odds, funnily enough. They're stacked against you, as he puts it. 85-25. That is by far the biggest heave of the evening. What can Walcott do now? The challenge has been laid down. 2012 Olympic champion, 82-81 earlier on. And no, he too, just like Weber. Succumbing to the pressure. That's about 77 metres. Nowhere near. Ironically, in this uh, final three situation, Better will end up winning by some seven or eight metres. 76 74. Yes, Better wins over Weber and then Paul Walcott in third place by over eight metres. He's a massive uh, figure, isn't he? Better. I saw him in the hotel this morning. He's not actually like some of the javelin throwers of recent years, hugely tall. He's only about, I guess, six foot 